what ought we to think on these issues of the day? And and so I actually we're going to gear ourselves to the point where we're going to hold us accountable to the same standard that we hold our caller at 888-248-2046. This article today, well, yeah. Yes, we're broadcasting. I, I meant to, I started saying this. I went on a tangent and then completely left it. This is broadcasting from Radio Free, Saudi Daisy, Tennessee. It's broadcasting out into areas that have been, at times in their past, experienced what it is to fall under the police power of a foreign entity. And so we're broadcasting into those lands, broadcasting the message of freedom. I say our freedom comes in proportion to our faith, but let's go to this article that I found in the Chattanooga, and this was actually broadcast, I'm sorry, published, chattanoogan.com on May 2nd. And I want to go to some key, they're going to provide some news, I won't read the entire article, but I'm going to comment on some of the things that sound like a really, really good thing. And I'm going to spotlight some things that show us that this is not a manly, a manly way to handle these things. This is not. This is not the way somebody from the man radio station would handle the issue. Saudi Daisy works out a procedure for town cleanup. Sounds good. Moral imperative. I love it. At the Saudi Daisy Commission meeting on April 14th, a plan was discussed for cleaning up the city. And a result of that dialogue, a procedure has been put in place to clean up the town when citizens will not do it voluntarily, city manager Arnold Stuhls said. A complaint form is now available. Well, that's good. Now, let's look in the old. Oh, let me give you a little history on nuisance. Nuisance. You know, you don't have to have a civil law against nuisance. You, in the good old days when Tennessee even recognized the common law, the common law clearly recognizes its foundation in Christianity and that which is right knowing that ultimately there will be a judgment day. But in the meantime, we've got an obligation to love our neighbor as a self before two or more witnesses let every word be established. And when we have ought against our brother, before I lay our gift to the altar, we're supposed to go to them. And we're not supposed to talk about them behind their back without first going to them. Their provision in law was you go to them by yourself. And you say, listen, uh, I'm a bit offended by this strange metal tire rim thing that's here collecting strange rust and uh, it's oxidating or oxidizing, whatever the word you want to call it. And it's got this water in it and it's it's just breeding mosquitoes and they're coming over and biting me, and giving me encephalitis, whatever it is. You go to your neighbor and say, say, hey, I have a complaint. Now, what you may find is your neighbor has back issues that you didn't know about. And suddenly you have a means to actually an opportunity notice that you might be able to love your neighbor as yourself. You said, whoa, you got a back problem. Wow, you can't move this this big, this honking rim here. <laughs> it weighs how many gazillion pounds? Even though it's round, you could roll it away. I just can't bend over to do it. Can't lift my leg to push it, whatever. You may say, well, what else can't you do around your house? I notice your grass has been getting kind of high. Wow, you can't push your lawnmower either, can you? Whoa. Hey, 14-year-old, come on over here. I'm not going to pay you anything. You know you're eating here in the, in, under my household. Why don't you mow our neighbor's yard? I mean, a whole lot of things can happen if you confront your neighbor personally. But it takes a certain amount of bravery. What if, they, what if I hurt their feelings? But in the olden days, you would go to your neighbor and you would confront it. And then if your neighbor says, listen, this is a work of art. <laughs> this is... This is my way of communicating. This is actually a, an instrument of free speech. Then you'd say, well, okay, we have, we're at an impasse. So then you would go get a couple of more people, a couple of neighbors, a neighbor on his other side of his yard, maybe one across the street. And you say, hey, can you guys come over here? We're both going to present our side of the story. And we'd like you guys to judge between us, see if you can settle this. And then we would say, he says it's our... He says it's tomato. I say it's tomato. And so then somebody makes a determination what's the best way to keep peace in the neighborhood. And then if they agree with me, the two neighbors agree with me, and then my neighbor doesn't comply. Well, then we file suit in the local court. We take it to the local court and say it's just too much for us or else we tolerate it. We just go, you know what? 
the Bible says that I'm supposed to turn the other cheek, that I'm supposed to uh, make, even if he's wrong, even if he's wrong, what I'm going to do is I'm going to love him and I'm going to keep, keep coals of fire. Now, this seems a little strange. We're not hearing this stuff discussed in on on uh, the Chattanooga or this or in the the uh, Saudi Daisy Commission. It may it may or may not have come up, but let's just go back in history. And then I might have to say, you know what, I'm just going to suck it up. I'm just going to suck it up. And I'm going to love my neighbor. I'm going to just treat him with kindness. And you know what? You never know. Next thing you see your neighbor mow his lawn and get rid of his artwork. It's amazing what will happen. That's in the good old days. That's in the good old days. It was common law principle. Or the other thing is I said, wow, it's just intolerable. And I got to love my neighbor next door who hasn't got the guts to solve this. So I'm going to take my neighbor to court under a nuisance claim. And then, you know what my neighbor can claim at that point as a defense? A positive defense. He'd have to say... He's going to have to say of why he's either going to have to admit it to the judge that he's been a nuisance and, and have the judge order him to, to behave. And if, if I tried hard enough to fix a problem and, and he wouldn't correct it, and I have to sue him, I have to use a lawyer, guess what? He's going to have to pay my lawyer fee because it shouldn't have come to this. Or he can say, actually, judge, you don't have the authority to tell me to get rid of this, this wheel that's rusting. It's communicating a message a First Amendment message, whether he likes my message or not, I'm actually protected in law. You have no jurisdiction. You have no authority to tell me to move my art. And then the judge would say, whoo, you're right. Sorry, buddy. Strange that it is. Hey, I'm protecting your property rights, but I'm already also protecting his right of free speech. And they're equal poise. They're equal. The, the scales of justice are in balance. Okay. Or whatever he's going to say. But that's the good old days. Now let's take to this what really seems like a moral imperative, undermining the law incrementally. And in fact, not having it a home of the free because it's the land of the free and the home of the brave or whatever. You can't, if we're not going to be brave, we're not going to be free. Saudi Daisy works out procedure for town cleanup. At the... Saudi Daisy Commission meeting on April 14th, a plan was discussed for cleaning up the city, and as a result of that dialogue, a procedure was put in place. A complaint form is now available, which specified the date and has check boxes for city code violations. You know, in law, if I want to sue the government, you know what I have to do first? I have to prove that I've exercised every administrative process to lovingly correct this issue before bringing it to a court of law. That's what it is. But look at this. I just fill out a form. I wonder on the complaint form if it says, have you confronted your neighbor? What did you say? What did they say? Have you asked your other neighbors if it's a nuisance to them? What did you say? What did they say? So a complaint form is, so there's check boxes for the code violations, which Ms. Mr. Stools said these codes have been on the books for years, but with uneven enforcement, abuse of them has become a problem. It is not fair to the citizens that maintain their property to live beside those that do not, he said. In America, the land of the free and the home of the brave is not a land of fairness. It's a land of justice. And it's a land of neighbors and communication. First Amendment communication rights without using insulting fighting words to very carefully explain to your neighbor what, what's going on in their yard that is a nuisance. Whatever that is, and use whatever, you know, lovingly, hey, let me be honest with you. Hey, can, I, can we be honest, right? Yeah. The new procedure to deal with these problems, problem properties, is for the complaint form to be completed, which can be done, now listen to this, anonymously. Now, for those of you who have a neighbor with an unruly yard, it seems great. Oh, good, I can do it anonymously. Again... That's what is it that can I just tell you, I just want to encourage you. That is an indicator of depravity. And you think, oh, you're going to get all upset. Well, there, if you're upset, that's an indicator of depravity. You know, we do have a number here. If you want to share your feelings, 888-248-2046. Doing it anonymously. Is that how you confront your witnesses in a courtroom? So who's going to make the complaint? The city? The city's going to come and mitigate, or I'm sorry, maintain your quarrel on a, on a mere infraction. 
and they're going to rep them, rep, represent themselves and not the one to whom the nuisance complaint by, you know, whoever it was that made the nuisance complaint. That's sissy. That's not what those listeners of the man station, Copperhead 1240 AM, that's not the way we do things. We man up. That's what we do. Even if we're a woman, we man up. And the goal is to communicate to your neighbor your concern. Now, I will tell you, I'm going to go back to a little biblical teaching here. Before you complain, you know what you might want to do? Look around your own yard. How many cars do you got? sitting outside in the front yard, not behind the fence? Uh, are you blocking their view as they try to get out of their driveway? Could you use a little paint on that garage? So, and this goes back to the thing that Jesus said, check the beam in your own eye before you start to investigate how to remove the speck in your neighbors. See, this is where it all comes back to, isn't it? We are just here at the Copperhead 1240 saying some really crazy stuff. Because really, how are we going to, how are we going to find our free country? How are we going to plant a free country? And that's why we're broadcasting from Radio Free Saudi Daisy, Tennessee, into all, all those areas who may have found themselves just captured by some foreign government that came in and assumed control. So. From Radio Free Saudi Daisy, Tennessee, the goal is to say, how can I individually, rugged individualist, do what is best for my community by making sure that I behave awesomely? That if my, I don't like what my neighbor has got going, I go talk to my neighbor and I get straight with them. I had a neighbor come to my wife, actually my neighbor's mother complained to my wife one time and it was a legitimate complaint. It was. Our dogs were barking. Her grandson was trying to sleep early in the morning, and, and she'd been talking to her daughter, the child's mom, and they were pretty upset because of our dogs. You know, they didn't have people with dogs until we came. And it was a legitimate complaint. Now, how it was communicated was not appropriate. You know, they have statute about certain profane words that were used. I was actually kind of, you know, it's amazing. If, you know, somebody outside their normal character starts saying things that are inappropriate, you, you you must have upset them pretty bad. So we realized, okay, they're pretty tilted over their edge. So what I did is I went to my next door neighbor and the first thing I did was apologize. I apologize. So by the way, they said these things to my wife, which you don't do. So I have a primary responsibility to protect my family from everybody. But the way I did it is I went over and knocked on their door and I apologized. I said, I will do everything in my power to shut my dogs up. I went ahead and built a larger, uh, more expanded privacy fence so that they couldn't see beyond our property. Those dogs wouldn't have anything to bark about. And then when I wasn't home, I locked them up in the garage. I made sure I took some action. But at the same time, I said, uh, you don't have permission to talk to my wife because you have not performed it well. Uh, I'm, you're demonstrating inappropriate behavior that goes contrary to the law of the land on my property. So if you have a complaint, you're going to have to talk to me. Do you understand? <laughs> so, you know, so I'm, there's a thing, but you know what? If you're, that's how you're supposed to do things. That's a good old way where you say, listen, you've, you've been an offense to me. I have to be honest with you. And you know what? I've been an offense to you. And that justifies, not justifies. We'll be back. Got to turn my Midweek. speaker off. You can get that staying fender benders or even heavy collisions. Uh oh, where to get Mako? Mako's Collision Center handles most insurance claims. Call George or Timmy at 867-7134. And I'm WDPF News 12 News Meteorology Pack 4. Oh, digital recording battery. Dead, dead, dead. Where's my other battery? Two batteries. Kicking, kicking, country. Wow, wow, wow. Bad man, radio station. Simple, no more men.
the man man radio station hunting fishing nascar tennessee talk southern rock chicken country chicken country man underwear 